the person that rejected me, when I got there, they sent me back to that same person. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Hi, hi, hi. Do you like my hair? Am I already like my hair? Is it pretty? Oh, thank you. Anyway, hi, welcome, welcome back to my channel. This is like the first video you guys will see that I'm talking in since I've gotten here. Anyway, my nephew was crying and he doesn't want to leave me alone now. It's cute now, Abby. It's not cute. It's cute now. In this video, what am I talking about? I'm talking about my visa process. I've had a lot of questions. <laughs> you will be like, who is asking me some question? <laughs> but I, I have actually had quite a number of questions. Like, so I thought, okay, why not just make a video and like answer these questions so that they will have the answers readily available. The visa process. So first of all, hi. If you don't know, yes, I transferred from. If you don't know, Mary. So I transferred from um, University of Lagos to a school in the US. And like the questions I was mostly getting were about either my application process, like my student visa process, or how I transferred from Unilag. So I'll just start from the beginning. <laughs> I was in my third year in Unilag. I had just finished first semester, but like so I applied in like september or something or august and i got my like decision maybe july i said and i got my decision like in september middle of september or something anyway so the process i found i looked for schools you have to look for schools that you, that you want to go to look for a school that has your course look for a school that is good because you don't just want to go to an anyhow school you want to look for a school that is good school that has the course you want to study like find out the prices they'll put like an estimated fee for you and know that international students are definitely going to pay more than regular students so unless you have like a scholarship or something that yeah but you do what you have to do <laughs> i wasn't like using sat to enter i was already in school so i transferred so if you're a fresh student like a freshman because you use you if your sat score is really good you can get scholarships to certain schools so this school i applied to this school i'm in right now i only applied to one school by the way this school i previously applied when i went to my sat's in 2018 or 19 i think it was 2018 so i wrote my sat's in like december 2018 and i had like a soulful result then too but if you're coming from nigeria or some schools anyway nigeria doesn't need like proof of english so ielts or tofu but check with your school your school might be different your school might want those things so they already had like my sat scores even though they didn't need it they didn't use it because i was applying as a transfer student after i applied to the school paid um the application fee so so people my friend was asking me about like payment when i was applying this time this time around the only payments i made like with a nigerian account are the payments in naira so every other thing i paid for it like with a us card so i didn't really have like that issue so i don't know how to answer those issues for you guys i'm so sorry but like you could probably pay with like either like a virtual card or i don't know paypal or something there are ways you just have to find the ways there are definitely ways after i paid for my application fee i was waiting for um admission decision i was i waited for like i don't know maybe like a couple of weeks to a month i'm not sure how long it was right now so before they they gave me admission i had to apply to get my transcripts from unilag so the process of applying for a transcript just search for unilag transcripts portal on google and it will give you it will bring out a a link <laughs> Let's bring out a link to their website and when you get to the website you see like something like new application basically you just start the process of, of getting your transcript so u.s schools will usually ask for your for an evaluation of your transcript so what you do is you have to have an evaluation body that you're registered to so you need like if you're applying for Unilag, like, you know, like has like a thing and understanding with west wes that's world education services or something they, they are an evaluation body what you do is you go and create your west account hey my ashy hands voila please the devil will not disgrace us <laughs> you go you create your west account you choose the type of evaluation you're doing you probably do like a cost by cost evaluation and you have to pay for that so you pay for the evaluation you pay for them sending your results you pay for them sending your results to you yeah so you pay for a bunch of things and then how much was my Thing. I don't I, I, I'm not really sure but I don't think it was more than $150 so for West you pay an activation fee I don't know about the other services but for West you pay an, I think you pay an activation fee then you pay for your evaluation evaluation is probably like I don't know maybe like $80 to $100 or something 
or 150 so the rest will give you a reference number and when you're applying for your put for your transcripts on the unilag portal the reference number is what you put as your west address so the address they're sending to is the west reference number make sure that you have the right number then the application process on the unilag portal the transcript i think now it's like 25k then you pay for them to send it to west i don't remember how much that is but you do that process then you have to wait for them to send your transcript to west then west will now like take probably like a week or two to evaluate your transcript so they'll tell you the estimated dates that, that the evaluation is supposed to be ready just know that they would have sent it to your school too directly so you don't need to like collect anything from west and then send to your school they will send it to your school directly once you put your school as a recipient after that you like you get an admission decision so I would really advise you to get things, all the things, all the documents you need ready, like ahead of time. So they're, they're, going, to, they're going to ask you, before you get your I-20, Seth, after you get your admission, you also have to get like an I-20 from your school. And before you get your I-20, you have to like do some things. And then you also have to prove that you can pay their school fees, along with like maybe a letter from your sponsor or something. I had to get a reference letter from my professors in the lab. My reference letter, sponsorship letter, um, proof of funds. Yeah, so if you're applying for a course that needs a portfolio, you need to work on your portfolio too. Um, If you're transferring, you need... um like the course syllabus for all your courses that are transferring but basically that is just like documents telling you about the courses you've done in your school so that they can see the, when they're evaluating which course can transfer they can see which one like transfers to the course they are doing in their school do you get so you just like you find that you probably find that in your like prospect or something because you know like you find it in your prospectus so you just may have to type everything out so after getting your course syllabus all those other things like you've gotten your admission you've everything set you get your i20 your i20 you have to sign it your school will sign it before they send it to you probably you're probably an e-copy so you, they'll sign it they'll send it to you then you so you sign it your sponsor or two or your guardian or something will sign it so then your us application process so how you start how i started it you have to fill your ds160 form first so actually no before you even fit your ds160 form you have to pay for your service fee when you get like admission you need to pay service fee to the u.s government as an inter as an international student the service fee is about 150 or 350 dollars or something they're about like around that price range so 150 to 350 and you pay that you pay that through like either online transfer or something or you pay it through money service or you pay it through um you send a what's it called a pay order is it pay order they call it i think it's pay order they call it it's like a check like a check and you like send it to them then you keep like all the details about of it because you pay it only once so you keep all the details and make sure you like you have it handy because you need the like a service number for your application fees for the um immigration office and when you do all of that you then um apply so, so when you do that you start your ds160 make sure all the details there are correct so give as much information about yourself and yourself and your situation in your thing there's a box that will tell you like if you've been refused before you have to tell them why you've been refused if you don't remember sure fine but then you like maybe give them in, like tell them what you think was probably wrong see i'm saying this thing now like freely but i swear this thing was like testimony so i applied i got rejected i reapplied that same day i got rejected and i got a date for the next week exactly a week from that day that i got rejected the person that rejected me when i got there they sent me back to that same person that rejected me <laughs> and honestly i didn't really change anything in my form you get your um visa by god's grace it will take like you have to drop your passport so it'll take like not too long maybe like three days that's that's it i guess that's the end of it if you want me to like tell you more about the the visa interview and that like that aspect in particular let me know in the comments or like send me a dm or something on instagram they're really like helpful resources on youtube there's this um, um channel it's called what's it called argo 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 visa or something they're like a company of ex visa officers and they just like tell you give you tips if you watch enough of their videos you get like an idea sense of what the visa officers are looking for actually practice your responses like not go and don't i'd not say go and memorize your answer that you give them when they ask you this question but like practice your your answers like make sure that they make sense know like how you want to stage your answer so if you're telling them if they ask you like oh why are you transferring now so basic so you don't want to just give them short answers and you don't want to give them long answers that they cannot spec what why are you telling me this but you also give them full answers answers that like tell them i like, give them detail i like, give them context of what is going on your situation and yeah you should be good like just check on on youtube the 
a lot of videos about like getting your visa just to get prepared for your interview and like documents you need i hope this video was helpful in in some ways i hope it gave you like a better perspective how to go about this whole thing my nephews are screaming so if you can hear them i apologize deeply that's what happened to me the end if you found this video helpful make sure to please like and subscribe hit the notification bell so that you know every time i post a new video i wish you good luck in your process i'll see you guys in my next video hopefully it'll be soon bye i love you also let me know if you like my hair in the comments tell me if you like my hair or not thanks